Hi everyone, this is Grace Baxter and I'd like to share with you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make a CD rack case. Now this case will be used for transporting the rack full of CDs from point A to point B. It'll provide a certain amount of protection, certainly keep the dust off of them, but also look quite attractive. Uh, the, the rack will be displayed on a product table for the musician that's traveling around and, and needing this this sort of uh, a container for the rack. Uh, I did search all over the internet for possibilities and you always think, oh, somebody out there must have made one. Well, if they have, they haven't posted it. So this will be my version. And um, when you watch it, it might just trigger um, possibilities for you. Maybe you need to make something similar and you'll be able to modify from my instructions. So here we go with the tutorial. And if you have any comments at the end of it, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. To give your finished case some stability and strength, you will need to add some Pellon. This product is iron-on with an adhesive on one side. To apply it, you will need a very damp pressing cloth as well as lots of steam from your iron and use quite a lot of pressure when applying it. This actually took far longer than I expected to and I ended up having to also stitch around the edges within the seam allowance uh, to make sure that it held well. To make the front pockets, cut a piece of fabric 24 inches long by 7 inches wide. Of the 24 inches, 17 of that will be the finished pockets once they are all pleated. 6 inches is the spacing between the pleats and 1 inch is used up in the side seams of a half on each side. The overall height of 7 inches will be shortened when you fold down a half inch on the top and a half inch on the bottom, leaving you with a 6 inch high pocket. To bind the top edge of the pockets, cut a piece of fabric 24 inches long by 2 inches wide. Stitch the binding right sides together to the pocket front at a half inch and then taking it to your ironing board press the seam allowance towards the binding. Fold down the other long edge of the binding a half inch and fold over one more time. Now you're ready to top stitch. To do the top stitching I recommend using the stitch in the ditch method that is stitching very very closely to the edge so that it actually tucks in and doesn't show on top of the binding. To actually create the pockets, you're going to fold the fabric on the dash lines and bring that fold to the solid line. Pin it in place and continue along until all of the pleats have been formed. Take it to the ironing board and press it. Lay your pressed pockets on the front and center it. Noticing how much room you're going to have for the side seams, you should still have a good half inch or even five eighths of an inch on each side. Looking at the pocket, you're going to want to sew top to bottom through the pocket. So spread open the little pleats that you have just pressed and carefully stitch on your white solid chalked line top to bottom. When that's done, you can then top stitch the bottom edge and the side edges of the pockets. The large back pocket measures 14 and a half inches high and 18 and a quarter inches wide. This covers approximately three quarters of the height of the finished back. The pleats are a lot smaller. They're only half an inch and when folded in half it becomes a quarter inch pleat. I like to try the case over the rack many times just to assure myself that the fit is going to be correct. In fact, I did end up having to cut down the sides quite a bit as it seemed to be larger than originally measured. To give the bottom a weatherproof finish, I added heat and bond to the bottom piece before sewing it into the sides, front and back. 
The lining is cut at the same size as the body pieces of the case. However, I would allow an extra half inch at the top for rolling over a narrow hem. When you sew the bottom on, be careful to clip the corners close to the stitching on the seam allowance without actually snipping through the threads. Trim away any excess seam allowance and turn it right side out, then press all of your seams as flatly as possible. Insert the lining into the case with wrong sides together. Reach down into the bottom with a needle and thread and tack the seam allowances at the corners and at the side seams as you're coming up, rolling up the case as you go. This will ensure that the lining will not shift as the rack is inserted and taken out of the case in and out many times. The lining will stay nice and snug to the body of the case. The size of the top is 18 inches wide by 10 inches high. Uh, the seams as usual are half inch all the way around and I allowed a good width of this so that we can have it nice and strong across the back overlapping by two inches and also overlapping by about two inches on the front lip where the velcro fastening will be attached. Well, there you have it folks. That's the conclusion of my lined and interlined CD rack case. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and that you'll be able to use some of these steps in your own sewing projects. Thanks for taking a look and have yourself a wonderful day. Bye for now.